In the rocky terrain to the northwest of Stone Guard, there is a path formed by a giant sandworm passing through the rocks. We should be cautious, as there have been frequent reports of missing adventurers here recently. Introduce myself. My name is Glenn. Well, it is all for my daughter. I simply could not leave here because I've been so worried about her. My daughter, Marcia, is captain of the Sandworm Raid Group. She intends to catch Queen Volandia, but it's too dangerous. She's being reckless. Marcia has never truly experienced the horror of that monster. Not like me. I lost my leg to the beast, and then the wound festered, and I died. Ordinary people like us are no match for her. What? You don't know Queen Belandia? Oh, she's a dreadful monster who sweeps through the desert, killing and gobbling up everything she encounters. Search around the sandworm layer, and you'll find traces of the monster. You'll understand why I'm so worried when you see for yourself what it leaves behind. Afterwards, go to her group's campsite and try to convince my daughter she has no idea what she's up against. I just don't want her to end up like me. Warning. This is the great corridor through which Queen Belandia roams. Entering risks your life. Go back from whence you came. <laughs> oh my. I'm done for. Oh, my cameras. Oh, I'm completely ruined because of Queen Belandia. She vacuumed up 200 of my camels in an instant. And not just the camels, but all the goods they were carrying, too. At first, I went around looking for her in the hopes I might salvage something. But then I saw a pile of bone fragments in a pit connected to the sandworm lair. The pile consisted of bone fragments of the people and animals she consumed. Seeing that, I didn't dare hunt for her anymore. Everyone told me I should be happy that I escaped with my life, but now I'm broke, propertyless, and have a huge debt to pay. Queen Belandia, she ruined my life overnight. 
You best be careful too. You could be her next victim. You mean the sandworm lair? It's to the east of here. But don't ever go near it. That place is dangerous. Glenn Richhill wanted to dissuade his daughter from trying to hunt down Queen Palandia. He was well aware of the Queen's horror, given that he died after losing his leg to her. Having witnessed the aftermath of Queen Belandia's work in person, you could understand why he was so worried about his daughter that he was unable to leave this world. Queen Belanda refuses to give up on her prey when she's marked them for the hunt. People would say it's fate for us to meet, so let's get on with the introductions. I am Josephine Craft, a wizard from Benelux. I'm studying the magic of Soren Warnack, who created the Moonlight Oasis here. I discovered that the magic used by Soren Warnack correlates with Queen Belanda's mana, so I've been investigating the Queen's behavior. That's the reason I went there. Did you go looking for Queen Belandir on purpose? She has already taken so many Resistance members from us. You almost became one of them. Did you do that out of curiosity? Oh, I understand. I'd want to stop my family if they said they would defeat Queen Belandir. I think I know how Glenn feels. Did you say Marcia? You should hurry up and try to persuade her.
I'm busy doing some maintenance at the moment, my friend. <laughs> Were you hoping to go up to see the observatory? As you can see, the ladder is under repair. It will take some time to fix it properly. <laughs> Maybe you can fly down to the observatory, if you can jump from that lofty hill there. <laughs> You're not really going to try that, are you? I've never seen you before. What brings you here? So what you're saying is that Queen Belondia is a monster that can't be beaten, and I should give up and stop trying. I don't know why a complete stranger like you is so concerned for my safety, but what do you think we're doing here? Everyone who's ever lived in this area has lost something precious because of Queen Belondia. They still are. We're fighting so that this tragedy finally ends. I've made a detailed plan. If you don't trust me, you can look at the journal in my barracks. The investigation team stumbled across Queen Belandia during their survey, leading her to launch a fierce attack. If it had not been for the wizard Josephine Craft, they might have failed to escape. You then sought out Marcia Richhill, Glenn's daughter and Sandworm Raid Group captain. You tried to persuade her to cease her plan to defeat Queen Belandia. However, she did not relent. I'm Marcia Richel. Swear on my life to defeat Queen Belandia, who killed my father. A heroic sword to protect. to stop from pursuing Queen Belandir? Good heavens. Now what do I do? Who knows what might happen to Marcia if I just leave things like this? Knowing her, she'll likely end up trying to fight Queen Belandir head on. Yes, that's a better approach. I should help my daughter so that she isn't put in danger. But how? Hmm. There is that trap Marcia set. I wonder if we can lure the beast there. What? I wasn't serious. Now that I think about it, luring the beast would be too risky. An ambush could just as easily put us at a disadvantage. How could we even bait a giant monster like that? I didn't realize someone so skilled was nearby. Or if anyone could find a way to help my daughter, it'd be Josephine Croft. I know I'm overstepping myself here, but I need you to do this one last favor. When Glenn realized that he couldn't stop his daughter, he decided to help her. He recalled the trap Marcia had prepared and thought that if he could lure Queen Belandia there, his daughter could achieve her goal without being in danger. Perhaps the wizard Josephine can find a way to help Marcia. <laughs> Thank you. 
Adventurer. <laughs> Want to make some money? The merchant unions buy moonlight scales from desert creatures for high prices. The castle, wave, and crescent blade merchants decided to participate. The purchase scales have three rounds of deliveries. The quantities and times have been set. Everyone has decided to pay two coins, twice the going rate, and even three if it's urgent. How about it? Don't you want to search for moonlight scales? armadillo scales in the moonlight desert and potent sandworm poison sacks in the sandworm lair. Someone sees her. Now, let me ask you a favor. You can get potent poison sacks from baby sandworms. Shape shift into an insect and approach them. What I need is a sandworm egg that is about to hatch. Find it while you're hunting baby sandworms. I'll leave it to you then. I didn't expect to discover this precious thing. The shell is very fragile. Try not to damage it.
Darn, I shouldn't have come here. Let's get out of here before more of them come. The potent sandworm poison sac is also used as a raw material for mana production. It is particularly suitable for a mana amplifier to lure Queen Melandia because it can be used to freely adjust the emitted level of mana based on external conditions. You're back just in time. I found the right magic schema that we can use for the bait. Since you have all the ingredients I mentioned, let's get started right away. First, put the potent sandworm poison sack over here. Apply it to the armadillo scales. Finish by carving the magic schema on the elemental fusion stone and... Huh? Failed. Hmm, hard to believe I made a mistake. It must be the fusion stone. Elemental fusion stones are riddled with impurities, making it difficult to use them for complex schema, like the magic schema for attracting monsters. Naturally, we just need to make a pure elemental fusion stone that can be engraved with any schema. I'll prepare everything else, so please get me the required materials. We're going to need some moonlit sand crystals and cactus water. Sand crystals are available in the highlands around the sandworm lair, and cactus water is available south of the moonlight desert. The first attempt to build the device for luring Queen Melandia ended in failure. Since common elemental fusion stones often contain impurities, they cannot be used to contain delicate and complex schema, like the magic schema for attracting monsters. Josephine explained that making a pure elemental fusion stone will make up for this error. Purified water used to draw a magic schema is essential to making a pure elemental fusion stone. This is because low water purity can lead to errors in the schema. In the desert where water is scarce, cactus water can be used as a viable substitute.
It is important to consider not only the size of the sand particles used for the pure elemental fusion stone, but also whether they contain their own impurities. Moonlit sand crystals can be ground to very fine particles and are the purest of their kind. If you want to know more about Queen Belandir, I'm sure Clay's book will help. I left it on my desk, so feel free to read it whenever you feel like it. I've been waiting. Did you get the materials yet? We need to make it quickly before impurities corrupt the materials. First, we grind the moonlit sand crystals and spread the dust on a heated plate. Then we infuse the wind element into the cactus water and let it flow. This hardens it to complete the pure elemental fusion stone. Now we engrave a magic schema for luring monsters and put the stone in the device. There, it's a success. Here we go. This is the device for luring Queen Belandia. Install the device wherever you want and then press the remote control button. Afterward, the level of mana around the device will increase to the maximum limit. Queen Belandia will sense the power and make her way there. Now, here's how to operate it. Would you mind having a look at the device? Like I mentioned, I made the device for luring Queen Belandir so it can be controlled remotely. Queen Belandir will appear soon after pressing the button, so make sure you find yourself someplace safe before using it. Well then, I wish you good luck. Having finished crafting the pure elemental fusion stone, the device for luring Queen Belandir was complete. After installing the device, you press the button of the remote control to amplify the mana emitted and attract Queen Belandir. The remote control must be operated at a minimum safe distance from the device. What brings you here this time? We can lure Queen Belandia with that device? Really? If that's true, I can catch her right now. Most members of the raid group are at the Sandworm Hatchery right now. If we want to catch Queen Belandia, we need them to return so we can attack together. My troops are currently working to reduce the number of Sandworms. They won't come back until they achieve their objective. If you get out there and help them with their mission, they'll be able to come back sooner. It's up to you. Everyone is bringing their very best to this mission. Everything we learn along the way is recorded in the operation plan back at camp. Read the operation plan at the Eastern Gathering Campsite. I'm sure it'll help you too.
Upon learning about the luring device, Marcia wanted to catch Queen Belandir immediately. However, in order to do so, a full-scale offensive involving the entire Sandworm raid group is needed, and most of the troops are already active in the Sandworm hatchery. Marcia's troops need help to finish the job and return quickly. and spiders are swarming the Queen Blandy Lair. Yes, I saw them rushing in. Why are the bugs swarming in like that? The Sandworm Raid Group regularly carries out operations to reduce the Sandworm population. Once these begin, all but essential members of the squad remain in the Sandworm Hatchery and only return when the mission is complete. 
The best and only way to get the squad members to come back is to help them complete their operation quickly. I've been waiting. Thanks to you, my troops returned earlier than expected. The time has come to carry out the plan. We've set so many traps for Queen Belandia already. She wouldn't be able to escape us once caught. But no matter how long we waited, she never showed up. But with the luring device you brought, we'll be able to attract her there as planned. Okay, I marked the location on the map. You can go there, find the chest in the center, and install the device. We'll be preparing to attack her in the meantime. Marcia and her group had already set up a trap in the hopes of catching Queen Belandia. Unfortunately, it had proved useless, with the Queen never showing up at it. With the new luring device, however, she could be attracted to the trap and captured as planned. The place Marcia mentioned was filled with bombs and gunpowder chests, all meant to kill Queen Belandia. Even the fearsome beast would struggle to survive if caught there during the blast. The luring device was installed in a chest, placed in the center of the trap. It's hard to adapt to the desert day and night. You're back. We're all set here. Shall we begin the operation? If we press this button, Queen Belandia will show up over there, right? <sighs> there she is. After Marcia pressed the button on the remote switch, Queen Belandia charged. Her fierce attack was cut short when she stopped in the middle of the trap and took flight. Determined to bring her down, the raid group let fly every arrow they had. The enormous sandworm was engulfed in an explosion as the gunpowder chest caught fire but managed to escape. After so many tries, I finally dealt her a critical blow. We may not have caught her, but we'll finish her off next time for sure. Thank you. We couldn't have done this without you. What do you mean? My father passed away a long time ago. My 
father really told you to? How is this possible? I don't want to catch Queen Belandia just because I'm captain of the Sandworm Raid Group. I want to catch her because I am Marcia Richill, daughter of Glenn Richill. Every time I felt discouraged by our failure to kill the beast, I looked to my father's name carved upon the victim's stone to steal my resolve. Soon, I will be able to fulfill his wish. My father always wanted our family to live together in a safe place. I'm going to rebuild our family home. A place with so many happy memories. Hopefully with my brother's help. Despite our falling out. So, if you see my father again, tell him to stop worrying about me. We will kill Queen Belandia soon. Then we won't have to carve any more names onto the victim's stone. It is a monument bearing the names of Queen Belandia's many, many victims. My father's name is carved on it too. Right down there. I hope you'll go see it. Marcia succeeded in critically injuring Queen Belandia and felt confident that the next battle against her would be the last. When she learned all of this stemmed from her ghostly father's request, she was filled with bittersweet gratitude. Above all, she now hopes her father can rest in peace. A stone engraved with the names of all those killed by Queen Belandia rests on one side of the camp. This memorial only honors the officially identified victims, so it is impossible to guess how many more fell prey to her over the years. Queen Belandia, the Invincible, the All-Consuming. No one had ever even so much as scratched the fearsome beast. Enter the Order of the Swan, a small-time guild hired by the Resistance to help gather sandworm poison sacks. While the resistance soldiers were mopping up the sandworms, they were suddenly dragged into the sand beneath their feet. One of the swans, Rowan, fell into the vortex. All at once, Queen Belandia reared up, writhing in pain. Rowan had morphed into a violet phoenix and burst free from Queen Belandia's carapace freeing everyone trapped inside. To this day, the mere sight of a human touched with malvescence is enough to violently enrage the mighty beast. Humans only defeated Queen Belandia once in the past. Among those she devoured that day was Rowan, who possessed the power of a star fragment. Rowan transformed into an ethereal violet phoenix and burst through her tough carapace. This was the first time Queen Belandia experienced such pain and she fled in surprise.